Pastor Andrew Brunson was locked up in a Turkish prison for two years, facing 40 to 50 years in prison because he was preaching the gospel. Well, he shares about his experience in prison and he visits the White House and even takes the time to pray and lay hands on President Donald Trump from the Turkish prison to the White House in 24 hours. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Well, imagine this. Imagine, you know, you're serving the Lord. You, you love the Turkish people. You go to Turkey and you begin to share the gospel and people give their lives to the Lord. And you have your church gathering and, you know, you're worshiping God. You're, you're learning about the Bible. You're studying. You're faithfully doing this for years. Faithfully, you know, for years. And all of a sudden. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Decides to do a faux coup. Imagine that, that it's not really a coup taking place, but it's something that's been orchestrated. Well, that's exactly what it looks like, because all of a sudden it seems like this, this, this free nation, the nation that you would go to if you were in Israel for a period of time and you weren't a citizen, you could go back to Turkey, get your passport stamped, mm -hmm. and you could come back. That's how friendly Turkey was with America and, and around the world. Well, they're NATO. I, I, well, I yes, they used to be a loyal NATO yeah. ally. And so, and so you're all of a sudden, it's all changing, and the, actually they're arresting all the people that you were friends with and the people that had a righteous stand in the government for freedom, if you would, and, and all of a sudden your world's changing, and next, next thing you know, they come to your house, hmm. and everything changes, and you're the pastor, and your, na your name is Pastor Brunson, and your wife, and they take both of you, along with a lot of these other people they wanted to, to snuff out their voices in the country and take you to jail. You didn't do anything wrong. They're accusing you of things you've never done before. Being a terrorist. They're accusing so many people of doing things they weren't really doing. It was tragic. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a perfectly orchestrated narrative so the world could look and perceive that the leader found a secret camera in a secret basement in the hmm. middle of a unscheduled coup to say everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Remember that basement call mm -hmm. he made? But now you are locked up and you're in jail because you were preaching the gospel and they're saying things, they're making you, the whole world's talking about you. They're saying, listen, we're never gonna let this man out. This man is a terrorist. He wasn't a terrorist, he's a preacher. He's talking about Jesus, he's talking about freedom, not locking people down, he's about freeing people up. And all of a sudden, you know, they're accusing you of the opposite of everything that you are. And, they're, and the whole world's talking about your country in America, they're talking about you. They're saying, listen, you've got to free this pastor. The leader of Turkey's going, we will not free him unless you free this guy. And all of a sudden it's like, what's going on? My life has totally changed, I'm gonna be here forever. But many people prayed. They prayed and said, God, would you free Pastor Brunson? Would you free him from jail? And our, our president, President Donald Trump, heard every day from different congressmen and different senators, heard from uh, Jay Sekulow and just every day. Citizens from across the country. Citizens, citizens from across the country. And he knew he had to do something. And imagine we, being right there and locked down for inside this hopeless situation in Turkey. And 24 hours later, you're in the White House. The White House of America, that's the, the, the people's house in the America. people's house. Well, that actually took place. It's Pastor Brunson and the president's President Donald Trump, and he was welcomed to the White House. Check it out. Pastor Andrew Brunson it is an amazing thing. You have to understand, if you go back and you read the Word of God, you see situations just like this. And the difference is quite often, for example, when Peter was arrested, he was arrested, the Apostle Peter, and he was locked down because of unjust situations. Mm. But there was an unjust leader too. So that not only when he got free because of God shifting the, the whole situation in the, in, the, in the prison system, and he got free, but they still had to sneak around in the community that they actually lived in because they still could have been destroyed, could have been killed. But not in America. When Pastor Andrew Brunson comes back to his country, he's welcome and freed by the leader. Yeah. That's how important it is to have a leader who's willing to listen to godly counsel and willing to do what's right. And that's what's happened when you're talking about what happened with you know, Pastor James Andrew Brunson with uh, President Donald Trump. He listened to all those advisors, as a matter of fact, and they brought him right into a press conference. I mean, it's, 
I mean, you can imagine it was it had to be so surreal because 24 hours ago I was in a T-shirt, not knowing if I was ever going to get out again. In right? prison, looking at 35 years. Yeah. And I'm thankful for this president who demanded that he would be released. Turkish President Erdogan was wanting to do a barter, was trying to get us to send someone back to Turkey. And this president said- So they said, could end his life. Right. And this president said, no, right. we don't make those deals. You're going to release Pastor Brunson. And I remember, I remember when I was prophesying this over the air on VFN TV. And I said specifically, this is what's going on. This is not a true coup. This is what thing was set up. And I remember some of our Turkish listeners and viewers are going like, that's not true. You can't do that. Well, look what happened. Mm. Look what took place. Pastor Andrew Brunson has been loving on the Turkish people. He loves the Turkish people. We love the Turkish people. God loves the Turkish people. But the leadership there just just clamped down and began to try. Listen, God is about freedom. God, God came to set his son to be able to set you free, to forgive your sins. And there is a sure way to heaven uh, through Jesus Christ, not some ambivalent, That's unknown right. way that you don't even know if it's ever going to happen. That's not. You can you can be sure in your faith in Jesus Christ, and that's what that's what Pastor Andrew Brunson was was sharing with the Turkish people in a, a real healthy uh, reported church that's there. And this is what was taking place. But then, okay, so this surreal moment. Like I was in jail a few moments ago. I got I, I flown into to Germany. I was welcomed by the, the German ambassador. ambassador, and he talks about this. As a matter of fact, President Trump brought him right in and said before all of the American people, and let him have a press conference right there where they actually said, let's just talk about this thing. And it was like an embracing where we all got a chance to embrace Pastor Brunson when he was brought back because of your prayers, many prayers, and our godly leadership and our president listening to godly leadership around him. As a matter of fact, let's join the uh, president right now with Pastor Andrew Brunson at the White House welcoming uh, Pastor Brunson with the press conference. Check it out. So thank you very much, everybody. This has been a long journey, but for Andrew, it's been a very interesting day because, as you probably heard, I said a little bit earlier, from a Turkish prison to the White House in 24 hours. That's not bad. Actually. And I, I want to start by saying that Noreen was unbelievable. She was calling and calling. She definitely loved you, let me put it that way. But she was calling, and she wanted you out. And they were, she was not playing games, right? And we're very proud of you, Nuri. Thank you very much. And you are very, very special to all of us. And you know, we have some of our great leaders right here. You know Jane, you know Cindy, you know Richard, you know Tom, you know Patrick, you know Mark, and all of these people. And right back here, the whole group of people, they fought so hard for you. They wanted you out. And again, uh, we've been negotiating long and hard. We do not pay ransom in this country, at least any longer. We won't pay ransom. Otherwise, you have big problems and lots of things will happen, lots of bad things will happen. But I still, I want to thank uh, President Erdogan. We've been dealing and we actually, until this, we had a very good relationship. I was actually very surprised that we didn't work this out a couple of months ago. But it started in a different administration, and they were not going to work out anything. And uh, we uh, took it over, we inherited it, and we have, I think, at this moment, gotten 19 different people out of various countries that were being held. Uh, Chairman Kim was really great to us. I think that started the relationship that we have now in North Korea with three hostages, as you know. Uh, Egypt. Uh, we had uh, Aya. Aya was, they said, a spy. She was sentenced to 25 years. They told President Obama, we will not let her out under any circumstances. And they told me she'll be in the Oval Office in 24 hours. We all know that. You guys worked on that one, too. And many others, many others. So, I just want to congratulate you because you have galvanized this country. There's so much, I mean, you just take a look at this. There's so much interest. And it's your faith, it's your strength, what you've done, gone through. I know what you've gone through. Uh, and I also know that a period of time ago, we were able to get you from prison to the house. And again, I do have to say, it's not an easy situation for Turkey either. They had a lot of difficult situations going on, and 
I do want to thank President Erdogan for making this possible. You understand what I mean by that? Was it easy? And was it easy for him? Most important, I want to congratulate you and your family. I'd love to say a few words. You may want to thank all of these great leaders because uh, they were really calling me a lot. <laughs> they called me too much. I said, okay, I know, we're working on it, right? But uh, they are terrific fans of yours. And right now, the whole world is a fan of yours. The whole world is your fan and your family's fan. So maybe you could say a few words, introduce your family, and uh, it's a great honor to have you back home. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my daughter, Jacqueline, my son, Blaze, uh, Jacqueline's husband, Kevin, and uh, my oldest son, Jordan. And this is Neil, who's uh, Noreen's brother. Of course, Noreen is my wife. And, uh, <laughs> and we especially want to thank the administration. You really fought for us, uh, unusually so. For, from the time uh, you took office, I know that you've been engaged. And Secretary of State Pompeo also was very engaged and fought for us. And uh, Vice President Pence, uh, we're very grateful, uh, Mr. Bolton. Uh, there are a number of people in, in the Senate, uh, and I can't mention everyone, but I know that my uh, uh, Senator Tillis visited me in prison. Uh, so did uh, Senator Shaheen and Senator Graham, and uh, Senator Lankford has been involved from the very beginning. So we're so grateful to so many people in Congress who stood with us and who, who prayed for us and who, who fought for us. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank you all very much. And, and I do have to say, we did leave out Many people in the Senate, many people in the House, you know that, Patrick. Uh, many people have been left out, and we just can't go through all of the names, but it was everybody that wanted this to happen. It was really everybody. The complete Senate, I think we can probably say, Richard, this was bipartisan. Do you agree? This wasn't just Republican, right? But honestly, I think if there was ever a bipartisan event, this was it. Uh, and I do have to thank Vice President Pence. He's doing a terrific job. He felt very, very strongly about this. And Secretary of State Pompeo, uh, he, I would say we spoke about this at least <laughs> once a day. Uh, yes, sir. We thought we had it done two months ago. Sometimes it doesn't always work out, but that's — I can only tell you that's better than anybody else could have done. And we are so honored to have you. And anything final you'd like to say? And then you're going to go and relax and go home and celebrate and have a great life, right? I won't ask you whether or not you're going back to Turkey. I won't ask that question. We do love Turkey. We were there for 25 years, and we love the Turkish people. Great. And That's very nice. Yes. We pray for their blessing. That's very nice. Yeah. That's very nice. And I know you do love the Turkish people. They're great people. I know that. They're great people. We would like to pray for you. We pray for you often. Thank you. Uh, as a family, my wife and I pray for you. Thank you. Well, I need it probably more than anybody in this room. <laughs> So I would, that would be very nice. Thank you. We pray for you yes, now? thank you very much. Okay. No, anyone? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you can. Okay. Do it. Yes. Lord God, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on President Trump, that you give him supernatural wisdom to accomplish all the plans you have for this country and for him. I ask that you give him wisdom on how to lead this country into righteousness. I ask that you give him perseverance and endurance and courage to stand for truth. I ask that you protect him from slander, from enemies, from those who would undermine. I ask that you make him a great blessing to this country. Fill him with your wisdom and strength and perseverance. And we bless him. May he be a great blessing to our country. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. 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 I, I just want to pray that the spirit of the Lord will rest on the president, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Listen, congratulations. Thank you. So Thank you. Great parents and fantastic children that were so Thank with you. you, and it is an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. And again, to President Erdogan, thank you very much. To the people of Turkey, thank you very much. I think this will be a big step in our relationship. Uh, we have had a very harsh relationship over the past number of months because of what was happening. 
And I'm not going to blame fault. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just saying this is a tremendous step toward having the kind of relationship with Turkey, which can be a great relationship, that I know we're going to have. So thank you very much. And President, thank you very much. That's so awesome. Can you imagine that you get a chance? The leader of the free world, the leader of the free world is welcoming hmm. you, listening to what you have to say. It's like, it's like Paul, so Paul's getting this chance to be able to come in. And then he listens and he has the floor of the whole nation. So the whole, the whole world's actually watching what's going That's on. Right. And then you look, he, he takes his time going from a Turkish prison to the White House in 24 hours. And of all the things he could do, he asked, can I pray for you? And the president being humble enough to say, to receive yes, it. you can. And when he got on his knees before a leader of the free world and began to pray with him, and the president bowed his head before a holy God, no matter what anybody says, our God takes notice of that. Amen. Takes notice of that. And this is such such crucial days and, and crucial times. This is a, a huge, huge event. And seeing all of these senators and congressmen and, and other leaders that have been working behind the scenes, taking communion with him behind the bars and doing different, it's just amazing. What a country, right? What a country, free leader, demanding that they release him. Right. He could have been doing anything. He's yes. very busy. Yes. But to know that he is standing for believers, I mean, you gotta look yeah. at, this is really a special moment. Yeah. Look at uh, the, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, mm -hmm. um, the senator from, I believe, Oklahoma, James Langford. Well, he actually, he actually he's the it's one amazing. sitting on the couch. He's the one that led the charge. The drive, right? Led yeah. the charge. And James Langford, Langford, a pastor, a youth minister, God just touched him and said, run for office. And he says, you know, this has got to be crazy. Why, yeah. why is this happening? But you know what? He responded to the voice of the Lord, and he led the charge on many things. But this particular major thing, and now... Uh, as you're seeing, you know, Pastor Andrew Bonson has a platform to the world and he's speaking and sharing. Such a humble man. Yeah. And, humble yeah, man. And yeah. this is not the first. Uh, my understanding is that the, the White House and this president is working on the release of 17 yeah. other Nonstop. Americans, not to mention the three uh, uh, Christians from North Korea that were released. Plenty yeah. from all around the world. They're, Amazing. They're, they're being freed Amazing. And, and not being taken under his watch. And it's just, you thank God for that because it's God that actually protects a nation and blesses a nation and that he's, he's allowing us to have this, 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 this uh, uh, defense of the gospel, if you would, and that it's an awesome thing. Remember, Peter got out of jail and he had to sneak around and they had to lower him out of a basket in the yeah. back because the, even though he got freed from prison, that he's wrongly, wrongly in prison, he still wasn't safe in his own nation. Yeah. That's not in America right now. That's a thing to celebrate. That's why we have to focus on who we put into office and that we're voting on because it matters who your leaders are. That's right. It could have been a different leader that said, listen, he needs to stay in prison. Yeah. We don't need to. As a matter of fact, he, got, he went into prison in a different administration who actually seemed somewhat not too upset about it. Not called, concerned. Well, he called Erdogan a close friend of his. You remember? Mm. He's the one yeah. that actually gave uh, the Iron Curtain. Yes. Not the Iron Curtain, but the Iron Dome. 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 To Erdogan. Yeah. You know, and now Erdogan is moving, uh, the Turkish leader is moving again, and he voted. Erdogan changed the Constitution since he's been there, and now his son is reportedly over the finance, son in law is over the finance. This is like a bad movie well, going if you, on. If you remember, not a not yeah. few years ago, mm -hmm. we had a U.S. Marine who made a yeah. wrong turn yeah. and ended up in Mexico. I was just thinking about him this week, yeah. more than an act of Congress. His name's to, hard to say, I would say. Yeah, yeah, to get this young man, this soldier, this guy who fought for us, to yeah. get him out of a Mexico uh, prison, I believe. Wouldn't. Yeah, and it, it's it, like... It was like 25 miles over the, over the border. To, and didn't you, know, you have that sense that if you were an American, yeah. you know, any time before, you know, two or three years ago, if you were anywhere around this country... You were a forgotten person if you were if yeah. you were held yeah. somewhere else outside the United States. But what's happening now is that the nations unless you're part of the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, yeah. yeah. What's happening now is that the nations of the world are recognizing mm -hmm. that you're not going to mess with American citizens at all. That there's a president and there's a Congress and a Senate who's going to fight for them. It's going to demand that they come back but home. But this younger generation, all they've known was the previous administration, yeah. and they don't understand this is what America's always been known for: being a Roman citizen years ago. That's what it was known for. It was known for, no matter where you are in the world, if anybody messes with you, they mess with Rome. That's right. That's what's so awesome about being an American citizen. 
what the previous administration tried to downplay and say it's insignificant, America, its original tent. The fact is, can you imagine you're on a vacation and all of a sudden it, you're in Europe and somebody kidnaps you and takes you off to some particular place somewhere and nobody's going to come for you because the, you know, being an American is not a value anymore? That's right. Well, that's changing back to its original tent. This is why it's so important. It matters who your leaders are. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't gone yet to vfnkb.com forward slash vote, that's vfnkb.com forward slash vote. You can see it right here on your screen. You need to go register. You need to go vote because you never know. It could be you next and who the leaders you voted for or didn't vote for. And as a matter of fact, Pastor Brunson voted while he was in prison. He voted absentee <laughs> ballot. And I'm, I'm, say who he I'm voted sure for. glad. He, I'm, I know he's glad he voted. <laughs> yes, he voted and it made a difference. It'll make a difference in maybe your son's life. Think of this. Think of this. Maybe your son's named James mm. Foley. Wow. And he's a journalist. And he's going to go try to free people up and let the story be heard. And you don't know that he's going to be taken captive. And the government that you voted for or didn't vote for is not going to go free him. And he's going to lose his life over there. Well, that actually happened. We showed that on yeah. VFN TV. It was a tragedy. James Foley's parents, we dedicated the whole program to his parents. We're going, how come our government didn't go rescue him? How come they didn't go after him? And they couldn't understand. And I believe that's one of the re reasons that President Trump, I don't know this for sure, but that, that he decided to run, you know, one of the key factors. He saw that an administration wasn't doing anything for right. Americans anymore. Yeah. And I think what he's sensing now is that not on my watch. This is not going to happen what anymore. We were talking about Pastor James Brun Andrew Brunson. Andrew Brunson. Pastor Andrew Brunson and being in captivity in Turkish prison, which we talked about. But listen, what was it like? Think about this. What was it like being in a Turkish prison? Well, let's listen to Pastor Andrew Brunson now as he talks about how he survived mm. such a tragedy. Let's go. Well, uh, just being in prison is, is pretty rough. Uh, at the beginning, I was held in solitary confinement for a number of days and that was very difficult, and the way I survived that was by just spending hours uh, in prayer just to keep from keep my sanity. And then I was kept in a uh, cell for eight people, but there were over 20 of us there, so it was very crowded, very, uh, I was very isolated both by language and by uh, culture, nationality, and also by religion. It was uh, all the people I was with were very strong Muslims. They were all arrested as Muslim terrorists as part of the Gulenist uh, movement. And so it was like living in a mosque in many ways. Can you imagine that? Mm. It was like living in a mosque. It's like living in a foreign land. Because you understand that as a Christian, you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That God sent His Son into the world because He loved the world. For God so loved the world that He sent His Son. This is what separates all the other false gods from the true God. God, the creator of the universe, loves you loves you so much. He wanted to separate himself from every other false god out there. And he said, this is what I'll do. I'll make myself known through my son. And he mm. sent his son, Yahshua, Jesus, into the earth to be born of a virgin, to live as we live so he can feel what we feel, empathize with us, but to live a sinless life. And then to be offered up on a cross. That's why the, the religion of the cross truly is where God offered his son up as a sacrifice for your sin, for my sin, for John's sin, to pay the price for sin once and for all. Listen, that work stuff and that religion stuff, it'll put you on a cross. Listen, Jesus already was on the cross and what he did, when he died on, on the cross, he paid the price for your sin. They buried him in a tomb and on the third day after being dead, three, three days, God, the creator of the universe, raised his son from the dead. The penalty of sin was dealt with. The penalty of death was dealt with. And you can have literally through, through Jesus Christ, instead of all this religion that persecutes you and torments you, you can have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. We shared our testimony at meetmyfather.org. You got to find out how to meet God. It's awesome. I want to pray with you right now. Comment below. Write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. What are your thoughts on this? Isn't this just wonderful? If you made a decision for Jesus Christ, let us know. Go to meetmyfather.org. Father God, I just thank you for freeing Pastor Andrew Brunson. God, I thank you, Lord, for freeing the others that are held yes, captive around 
around the world, God. We thank you for the Turkish people, God, and we pray for revival in Turkey, Father God. We pray for a great awakening in Turkey, Father God. We pray across the earth that your son would be glorified, God. And dear God, we ask you, Lord, end abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.